The 67 kilo A session was the session so far. I could barely contain my excitement watching it, barely spent any time sat in my chair, just yelling at the screen. Uh, partly because it was a fantastic session, but also we have a bit of a multiplier bet as a weightlifting house team here on the entire sport of weightlifting. So I'll let you know how we all do on that after the Olympics. But for now, we are still going strong. Now, there was really one favorite in this competition. It was Chen Lijun from China. He's the strongest there. He's the total world record holder. He's a multiple-time world record holder, four-time world champion. But there were a few others who looked to do pretty well also. Luis Mosquera, who's medaled at previous Olympic Games, and Mirko Zani from Italy, who just looks better and better over training, particularly in the snatch. Now, this episode of the Weightlifting House Recap is brought to you by the Elite Barber, which is now 20% off for the next 24 hours. Now, the Elite Bar has some of the greatest specs available on a weightlifting barbell. It will last you as you endure some of the hardest training over the coming years of your training career. And right now, 20% off plus free shipping in the USA and the UK. It is an absolute steal. Okay, let's get into this. Bernadette Matin from France got the ball rolling on the snatches with his trademark long weight before lifting and this real bent arm lockout as he hit 132 kilos pretty comfortably on his opener. I was slightly nervous for him with the jury being particularly tough at the moment with regards to pressing out and his, you know, well, he can't really straighten his arms. I was concerned, but he did okay. Mitsunori Konai from Japan and then also Indonesia's Denny both tried 135 kilos on their openers, but couldn't get the weight. Bernard Matin hit 135 kilos on his second before Mitsunori Kanai missed again, putting himself in danger of becoming the second Japanese weightlifter to bomb out at their home games. Denny, however, did better, getting 135 kilos on the board finally. And so Mitsunori Kanai took his third attempt at 135 kilos. It was by no means comfortable, but he did enough to avoid the bomb and survive for those clean and jerks. And then one of my favorite lifters at Kamjon Ergushev tried to enter the game with 139 kilos, but he couldn't stick it, losing it behind, which is really beginning to annoy me because he has all of the characteristics of uh, a world champion. And at some point, I think he probably may well become that, or at least a continental champion, but he just misses too often. He did come back and he made it look pretty easy on his second attempt, but he's missed his opening snatch at three of his last five competitions, which, you know, makes you kind of wonder what he can do to improve with this level of inconsistency. Now, there are a few lifters who are sort of on the edge of medal contention who then began to open. Han Myon Mok and Mohamed Furkan Ozbek both hit 142 kilos on their openers with no problems. And then Pakistan's Tala Talib got 144 kilos. And it was great to see him here. I've been covering him a little bit over the last couple of years as being a feisty, fast, uh, hyper-mobile, aggressive type lifter. And he's really only competing here after having been awarded one of these tripartite commission invite slots, essentially a, a bit of a wild card entry. Then we saw the, the favorite, China's Chen Li Jun, who opened maybe a little bit earlier than I thought he was. He came out for a very comfortable looking 145 kilos, which was then matched by Mirko Zani from Italy, who somehow got one red light for a lift that looked utterly perfect. There was nothing about that lift that wasn't objectively good. So I'm not quite sure how that happened. They both then selected 150 kilos for their second attempt and waited for others to take some lower lifts. The last then to open was perhaps not totally surprisingly, but also somewhat surprisingly, in my opinion, Colombia's Luis Mosquera, obviously one of the fastest lifters in the world. And he opened with 148 kilos, almost powered it as he actually kind of does. He's one of the few weightlifters who does that, particularly in the cleaner jerk like Sheezy Young, just at lighter weights. And he made it look like there was plenty more in the tank there after that 148. Han Myung Mok then tried 149, but he clocked it, so he pulled and didn't end up going under. And now came three attempts in a row at 150 kilos from Chen Lijun, Mirko Zani, and Tala Talib. That's China, Italy, Pakistan. And Chen Lijun went first and looked like he had it, but there was some rotation at the bottom position, and so he lost it, which kind of just comes with the training age that he has. I mean, he won his first World Championships in 2013, and there's a little bit of a rotation in that bottom position. Mirko Zani missed as well, perhaps due to the 10-15 minute wait that he had to take in between his opener and second. But then Talat Talib, who'd made two lifts at that point, stepped up and absolutely nailed 150 kilos, 
kissing the platform in celebration afterwards, also basically kissing the platform with his butt because he went so damn low on that lift. Mokozani came out on his third attempt at 150, which he unfortunately missed, leaving just Chen Li Zhen and Luis Mosquera still lifting. Chen raised his attempt to 151 kilos to bring Mosquera out first, and when he missed it, Chen chose to stay at 151 kilos to open up a slim lead, but unfortunately that same kind of rotation problem caused him once again to miss despite a really strong looking pull. And so Mosquera had a chance to take the lead for himself. If he made this lift at 151, he'd be six kilos above Chen Li Jun. I mean, Chen Li Jun has been a world record holder in the clean and jerk. He's incredibly strong. So this would be tremendously helpful. And he absolutely nailed it to go one kilo above Talat Alib and six kilos above Chen Li Jun, which meant that Chen would need to clean and jerk seven kilos more than whatever Mosquera would manage. Clean and Jerks then started with a much more confident opa by Mitsunori Konai. He hit 165 kilos to ensure that he would leave with a total to his name at the home games. Denny hit 166 kilos before Talat Alib, who was second after the snatches, came out really early on for the same weight. He cleaned it, but he got lightheaded, dropped the bar and collapsed behind the platform. And it's just this harsh part of weightlifting that in this situation, the athlete often has to come back with very little time and attempt the weight again after just a couple of minutes. But Talat Alib showed a lot of strength, internal fight, uh, great heart to do that. And this time he did manage to nail the jerk. After opening so early in the clean and jerk, despite having done so well in snatch, at this point he kind of looked to be out of medal contention in that total. The French Bernardin Matin then missed 171 kilos, not looking really at all close to making the jerk. He then missed it again, so he went up to 172 kilos to buy some recovery time. And for those of you who've seen him, you know he has some of the most extraordinary femur or extraordinarily short femurs, long spine, a uh, really pronounced weightlifting physique, almost more exaggerated even than someone in this category like Adkamjon Ergashev, which means that he ends up finding the pull particularly difficult, barely pulls it, gets up just, uh, and then he's got this wonderful re-rack of the jerk before he goes up overhead. Mokuzani was up next with 172 kilos which he got overhead but then had to wait while the jury reviewed it. They eventually took the lift away from him for oscillation deliberately bouncing the bar kind of in between the clean to aid for the jerk which is of course an infringement that's not given very often but is still part of the rules. Mitsunori Kanai then gave us one of the most epic saves ever. He staggered around the platform with the bar overhead for what seemed like an absolute age before stabilizing. The jury considered then taking it away from him, which would have been brutal because he fought so hard and it was a totally deserved lift. And to the relief of all of us watching, he got to keep that 170. Of course, then all of that drama had given Bernard Matin a pretty decent rest for his third attempt, but it wasn't enough and he did end up bombing out. And then next it was Mohamed Furkan Ozbek's time to suffer. He missed his opener and his second lift at 173 and then he bombed out at the same weight, not able to stand up after the clean. It seemed like there were a few lifters here in this session who really had their eyes on medals having been so close in the pack during the snatch rather than just hitting safe lifts to ensure a total. Now for all of this time, Talat Alib was still sitting in a medal position, but Han Myung Mok made a hard fought 174 to finally overhaul him. Chen Li Jun then came out early, despite needing to put forward an enormous clean and jerk to guarantee a win, having only snatched 145 compared to Mosquera's 151. And he came out with 175, and despite not catching the bounce, it did actually look very easy. The pull was light, the stand was quick, and the jerk was an absolute piece of case. I still maintain he is the most jack Chinese weightlifter out there. Luis Mosquera then came out and matched that to maintain his gold medal position, forcing at that point that Chen Li Jun was going to need at least 182 in order to make his lift. The world record of 188, his best in that category of 187, so he knows he can do those kind of numbers if he needs to. Marco Zani, having missed his 172, then came out and missed 177 before taking it again and hitting it. This time the jury did not interfere and he kept the lift. And that put him temporarily in the lead and with the hope of a medal. Han Myung Mok then tried to take the place but 
he couldn't manage 178. And so this is where things then got particularly exciting. Luis Mosquera took 180 kilos, which of course would force Chen Lijun to make 187. No doubt thinking this would be enough to keep Chen at bay, but he couldn't get under the jerk. He then came out for it again, got it overhead, and he powered this one. He power cleaned 180. He got it overhead, and then without having a down signal, he dropped the bar. And so he got red lights, but his coaches appealed and he was awarded the lift. We can only kind of assume from our positions watching that there was some kind of technical problem with the down signal because you could see him make this lift and he held it for a second or two and then dropped it and then looked at the judges confused, walked off, waited, looked terrified that he might have lost his opportunity to win this Olympic Games. And then finally you saw the moment when he found out the lift did count and he just leapt in the air. It was a magical moment. And of course it meant that Chen Lijun would now need 187. But before the main event, Adkamjon Ergashev still had two lifts to try and claim a medal. He cleaned 184 kilos but couldn't keep his knee off the platform on the jerk. He went very low. He tried again on his third attempt but this time he couldn't even clean it. Meaning that Italy's Mirko Zani would claim a medal. And so having taken only one attempt so far, Chen Lijun jumped from his 175 all the way to 187. This was needed to overhaul Luis Mosquera and claim the gold. The pull was strong, he stood up the clean easily, and then the jerk was an absolutely brutal display of strength. It looked as though that 12 kilo increase was just trivial to him. He showed the other lifters that no matter how hard they tried, he would come in at the end to claim what is his. As the saying goes, snatch for show, clean and jerk for dough. He turned up, he was the strongest. Chen Lijun is the Olympic champion finally. And so in gold medal was Chen Lijun with 332 kilos in the total. In silver, Luis Mosquera with 331. And in bronze with 322, we had Mirko Zani from Italy. It was very tight. After that, we had a 321 and a 320, a phenomenal session for the 67s. Guys, don't forget that for the next 24 hours, the Elite Barbell is discounted by 20%, plus free shipping if you live in the UK or the USA. We do, of course, ship to most other places. I'll put a link to that down below. It's 10% off everything else. Hugely appreciate you all tuning in, and we'll catch you all tomorrow for the Women's 55s.